What is up, guys? Welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Kevin Kreitz. This is the channel where we go over to crypto news, followed by five charts every day. Today, looking at Bitcoin, Ethereum, YFII, Quant, and XRP. And as always, timestamps are down in the description below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn that bell on to catch notifications for all daily uploads. The market is pumping, guys. Bitcoin around 44,000, Ethereum trading around 3,100, and the entire market is reflecting this. Dogecoin up around 21%. Even ICP is having another great day again today, up around 30%. Ethereum Classic popping off today, up around 12%. I mean, everything across the market is reflecting the price action from Ethereum and Bitcoin. And for anybody new here, if you haven't checked out this website, etherchain.org slash burn keeps track of all the Ethereum being burned from EIP 1559. You can see here behind me, it refreshes every 10, 15 seconds or so. And we are now sitting at 11,124.1 Ethereum burned. So if we take into account that at the current time of filming, Ethereum is trading around $3,100. We're gonna round up. So we're gonna say 3,100, do some quick math here, times 11,124.1 equals 34,484,710 of Ethereum has been burned so far. And as you can see here behind me, every single minute that goes by, more and more Ethereum is removed from circulation. That number just keeps going up. More and more Ethereum just keeps getting burned. And it's important to take into account that this isn't just some random cryptocurrency. This is Ethereum. This is the second largest cryptocurrency. This is the only other cryptocurrency that has ever been spoken about in a somewhat serious manner about possibly flipping Bitcoin. What's going on with Ethereum is actually, in my opinion, a huge deal. This is the first time that we have seen a crypto pump up the market cap of the crypto space the way the Bitcoin does. And we saw that leading up to the test nets and we saw some indications of that leading up to the hard fork that Ethereum could potentially carry the market. Up until now, Bitcoin dictates the market cap of the crypto space. When Bitcoin pumps, the entire market pumps with it. When Bitcoin dumps, the entire market dumps with it. We see similar situations across the market in different ways. With Dogecoin, we see that when Dogecoin is pumping, meme coins pump. We see Dogecoin pumping today and Shiba Inu also having a great day today. However, we see plays like Axie Infinity dumping today, even though the entire market is pumping away. And likewise, we see My Neighbor Alice dumping in price as well along with Axie Infinity. So it's worth thinking about the fact that this may be the first time that a different cryptocurrency that is not Bitcoin has the possibility and the opportunity to carry up the entire crypto spaces market cap and pump up the entire crypto market, including Bitcoin, and even possibly bring some stability to the crypto space. And in my opinion, it is a huge deal that Ethereum can not only have such an effect on the crypto space, but also have such an effect on Bitcoin. Because in its current state, Bitcoin has no use case besides being a store of value. There are some DeFi projects I know about, but at the end of the day, Bitcoin's main role is a store of value. It is supposed to be virtual gold. Ethereum, on the other hand, is smart contracts. Ethereum could be the future of the internet. Ethereum is DeFi. Ethereum has so much use case. So Ethereum pumping in price, especially now that it's deflationary, as well as having such an impact on the entire crypto space's market cap, being able to carry up the entire crypto space the way that it's done in the last couple of weeks is a huge deal. So we're gonna stop my TED Talks here for a moment. We're gonna jump into the charts. We're gonna take a closer look at price action, especially for Bitcoin and Ethereum. We're gonna take a closer look at what is going on. But overall, the market looks great today. Looking at Bitcoin's daily chart, let's zoom in here, turn on our notes from last time. So Bitcoin is pretty much pressed up towards the breakout target we talked about around 45,000. But here's the thing, if we turn off all the notes, Bitcoin has not broken out yet, so that is no longer my breakout target. You can see here, conversion line, baseline, lagging span is not quite out yet. As soon as that lagging span shoots out, I would not be surprised to see Bitcoin end up around 48,000. We got to talk about something as far as price action goes, because I'm seeing a lot of things circulate about the possibility of this being a bull or bear trap and showing pictures of around 2018, 2017, as far as price action goes. I just want to talk about this for a moment because this is Bitcoin's daily chart. This is Ethereum's daily chart. You see that lagging span has already popped out. But Ethereum is pretty much in breakout mode. I mean, it's, we'll talk about Ethereum's price action in a moment, but Ethereum is pumping up the entire market. 
this has nothing to do with Bitcoin. Why anybody is talking about Bitcoin's possible dump coming soon. I I have generally always kept an eye on Bitcoin to watch price action across the market. I've always tweeted about Bitcoin to talk about Bitcoin's price action because Bitcoin dictates the market. This is no longer Bitcoin's market as, as far as the last few days go. I mean, that could change, don't get me wrong, but this is Ethereum's market now. And as far as price action goes, Bitcoin is lagging behind Ethereum in every way. Ethereum already way ahead in the breakout. Bitcoin, not quite in breakout mode. Let's jump to the four hour chart. Bitcoin's four hour chart, pretty choppy, trying to get up there, clearly being carried by something. Ethereum's four hour chart, clearly carrying the entire market with no intention of stopping. I mean, look at this four hour chart. Nothing about this looks like it's gonna pull back. There may be a bit of a pullback here. We'll talk about how price action in a moment, but as far as comparing this to Bitcoin goes, why anybody is still even talking about Bitcoin or what Bitcoin's gonna do to the market is beyond me. Let's jump to the one week chart, guys. Here's Bitcoin's one week chart. Looks terrible, always has. It has finally gotten a nice relief bounce. Let's look at Ethereum's one week chart. Look at Ethereum's one week chart. Extremely bullish looking. I mean, again, Bitcoin's one week chart, Ethereum's one week chart. Bitcoin's one week chart pressed right up against the Kumo cloud. All of this action was right well before the London hard fork and the EIP 1559. That was, this was all well before it, everything going on down here. We all expected Bitcoin to push into the Kumo cloud, hit these lower price targets of 22,000 possibly, but then it got this relief bounce and Ethereum carrying the market. Ethereum is now above the base, well above the baseline. And when we talked about the fact that if Ethereum could close above 2818, 2820, that that would be the most bullish possible scenario for Ethereum. Well, guess what? Ethereum closing possibly, and then there's one day, 24 hours and one hour. So 25 hours left until this candle closes. If this candle had closed at 2834 or even 2850, that would have been extremely bullish. This candle is now positioned to possibly close above 3000. And that is absolutely insane. Ethereum looks so bullish. It is not even comparable to Bitcoin. So why anybody is still so concerned with what Bitcoin is going to do to the market, I don't understand it. I just want to tell you guys personally, in my opinion, that's not what I'm looking at anymore. I'm keeping my focus on Ethereum for the time being. Don't get me wrong, I keep both of them open. Anytime Ethereum does show a bit of a sign of a pullback, it does seem to be a bit affected by maybe Bitcoin running into a resistance level, but it doesn't seem to be slowing Ethereum down. Ethereum is now carrying Bitcoin the way that Bitcoin used to carry Ethereum in my opinion. And there is no way of telling what's gonna happen. We're gonna have to wait and see over the next week or so if this continues, at what point, if we jump over to Ethereum's four hour chart, is Ethereum planning on slowing down? Because as far as price action goes, July 20th, Ethereum's around $1,700. Leading up to the hard fork, it starts pumping. And ever since the hard fork has happened, Ethereum has had its foot on the gas and it's showing no signs of slowing down. So as far as price action goes, again, I just want to show you guys Bitcoin's four hour chart, Ethereum's four hour chart. So we're gonna jump back over to Bitcoin. We're just gonna talk about Bitcoin's price action, price targets, and then we're gonna come back to Ethereum and spend a little bit more time talking in more detail about Ethereum's price targets. So looking at Bitcoin's daily chart, let's turn on our notes and talk about price targets. Actually, let's keep the notes off here. And for anybody that's new here, we talked about this a little bit yesterday. We'll talk about it again for a moment. Bitcoin is pretty much in breakout mode. I mean, this lagging span used to be way back down here when we talked about this, but I said, once that baseline comes out and that conversion line pops out and look how perfectly they are spread apart. They're not even close together. As soon as that lagging span comes out, in my opinion, Bitcoin is all cleared for a breakout and could potentially push as high as 48.7. And again, if we look over at Ethereum's daily chart, Ethereum's pretty much already in breakout mode. Lagging span, conversion line, baseline, everything is out. I think it's pretty much just waiting on Bitcoin to catch up. And in my opinion, the possibility of a Bitcoin Ethereum breakout could potentially push the market into a very bullish state. So my breakout target for the time being for Bitcoin is around 48.7. I think it's only a matter of time in the next few hours by later tonight. I'd imagine Bitcoin should challenge at least 45,000. I'm surprised it hasn't at this point, but it's pretty much getting there. Ethereum is just slowly creeping up while I'm filming this, trading around 31.42 right now, and Bitcoin is around 44.383. So I think it's only a matter of a few hours now until Bitcoin, the very 
minimum taps around 45,000, maybe leading into the breakout. You can see that lagging span is just creeping closer and closer while I'm filming this to that edge. And it really just is a matter of maybe less than 24 hours until we have some kind of answer as to what's going to happen with the market. And potentially we may see a breakout from Bitcoin and Ethereum. So my breakout target is around 48.7. Let's jump to the four hour chart and talk about pullback targets, because if Ethereum starts pumping or stops pumping, sorry, that is when we should see some kind of pullback across the market and especially from Bitcoin. And before we talk about pullback targets on the four hour, I just want to mention on the weekly for anybody who hasn't been here before, if Bitcoin manages to close above 46.8, and again, on the daily, Bitcoin is pretty much positioned for a breakout if Ethereum keeps pumping. And my breakout target for Bitcoin is around 48.7. If we jump over to the weekly chart, if Bitcoin closes around 48.7, and that is in 25 hours that this candle closes, that will be a very, very bullish weekly close for Bitcoin. As long as Bitcoin can manage to close above 46.8, Bitcoin is a very bullish weekly close. And then Bitcoin and Ethereum with these very different looking weekly charts are positioned to possibly push up in price substantially higher. I mean, these are very different looking charts with these last few candles than they have been in the last few months, but it all depends on this breakout with Bitcoin. And there's 25 hours left until this candle closes. And it all really depends on what happens in the next 25 hours. And if Bitcoin manages to close above 46.8 or even potentially push all the way to 48.7 and close there, that is a very bullish close for Bitcoin. If we jump over to the four hour chart, let's talk about pullback targets. Now, if Ethereum stops pumping, if for any reason Bitcoin corrects heavily and starts to pull down the market, we'll be looking at these pullback targets. So if for any reason the Bitcoin starts to pull back or Ethereum stops pumping, my initial pullback target is around 43.2. We saw a lot of support in that range. Below there, I keep my eye on around 42.5. Below there, I would keep my eye on this area of around 42,000. And on the lowest end, I'd keep my eye on the Kumo Cloud. I'll kind of, let me just grab that brush, move that out of the way. Kumo Cloud would kind of come up in this area in that situation. Keep my eye on this price target here of around 41.1. And then on the very low end, if there is some kind of extreme correction, I keep my eye on these moving averages here. And that price target is around 40.9. Now there are some levels below that that we can always keep an eye on because the market has dumped intensely from this range before. So it doesn't hurt to keep an eye on that main one that we've talked about for quite some time, which is 38.5, 38.7, 38.5, 38 38.7. There's a lot of support there. If there is some kind of massive correction, 38.5, and 38.7 will be my low targets. And below that, 37.6, I believe. No, 37.8, we also saw a lot of support. So on a very extreme correction, if there's any massive market crash, those would be the bottom areas that I would look for a bounce for the time being. Now it could bounce down from there, but there is enough support in this range of around 37.8 and 38.5 that we could see a potential bounce there in some kind of extreme correction. But that would be a very extreme correction. There would have to be a big market crash. And I just, I don't see Ethereum slowing down for the time being, but it doesn't hurt to keep an eye on those. But as far as pullback targets go for the time being, I keep my eye on around 43.2, 42.5 and 42,000 and below there 41.5. But if we jump back to the daily chart, my breakout target for the time being for Bitcoin is around 48.7, all depending on it should challenge around 45,000 soon. Should have a bit of resistance there. We may see a bit of a pullback for the time being. May bounce around in this area, but you can already see that that new daily candle is now just opened and it's I mean, this last candle just closed. Look at that. So as far as price action goes, I think it's only a matter of time before Bitcoin does at the very minimum challenge 45,000. And then it all depends on that lagging span. I mean, look at this change from the time I started filming this. You can see here that lagging span is just waiting to pop out. And as soon as that pops out and Ethereum is already all good to go, if we will jump over to Ethereum in a moment, but we could see a breakout to 48.7. But again, 48.7 is going to be my breakout target. 45,000 should be challenged soon. Keep my eye on pullback targets of around 43.2, 42.5, 42,000, and 41.5. And on the extreme end, I would keep my eye on 38.5 and 37.8 for Bitcoin. 
looking at Ethereum's daily chart, I mean, Ethereum looks insanely bullish. It's pretty much breaking out while I'm filming this. Let's turn on our notes from last time we talked about Ethereum. As far as price targets go, Ethereum is pretty much positioned, in my opinion, to potentially break out to at least 3,500. You can see here, lagging span is out, conversion line is out, baseline is out. Ethereum looks good. If we jump over to the four hour chart and take a look at price action there, I mean, this thing is just showing no signs of slowing down. It does look slightly overextended at this point, but I mean, a bit of a pullback even wouldn't be a big deal. I wouldn't be surprised if it gets rejected here, pulls back to around 3000, consolidates for a while, and then potentially retests that resistance level. If at any point Ethereum starts to show signs of slowing down, keep my eye on this area. I'd imagine that baseline should come up to about there. So as far as price targets go, the first one I would keep my eye on is around 3000. Below that, I keep my eye on 29. 29.20, 29.30 in that range. And the indication for me that Ethereum has lost steam is whenever we see Ethereum on this four hour chart challenge this Kumo cloud, because so far it has kept its distance. It came close here, but didn't even touch it and has just been taking off ever since. So at any point on the four hour chart, the Kumo cloud should keep coming up like this. So if at any point Ethereum seems to kind of dip into the Kumo cloud around just under 2,900, that would be my first indication that Ethereum is losing steam. But for the time being, there is no other indication at the moment that Ethereum is planning on losing steam. Running into resistance here, but that's not shocking. So it may do a bit of a pullback to around 3,000. Anywhere below that could be around 2920. And on the lowest end, I keep my eye on around 2,900, but Ethereum looks bullish. And if we jump back to the daily chart, turn off all these notes. The bottom line is that Ethereum looks insanely bullish. I mean, there is the fact that this is a lot of green candles in a row and usually if there was that many green candles in a row as far as hype goes we would assume that there's going to be a correction but again first of all this has not been some kind of substantial jump in price that has not gone parabolic it's been a slow steady daily climb of green candles with a bit of a correction around the kumo cloud here not a huge one but the other thing to take into account is that this isn't a hype driven pump this is ethereum pumping because of the EIP 1559 because of the London hard fork, because of the fact that there is Ethereum being removed from circulation every few minutes. So as far as price action goes, nobody really knows what's gonna happen in the coming days, but so far everything looks bullish and how long this pump can keep going is up to Ethereum. So whenever Ethereum does start to show signs on the four hour chart that it's slowing down, that'll be our first indication that maybe this pump has been a little overextended, but so far, Ethereum is moving perfectly fine. Even on the four hour, we might see a bit of a pullback here. I mean, it still looks like it's ready to challenge that resistance level, but a bit of a pullback, nothing wrong with that. These are four hour candles. So maybe over the next 12 hours, we see a bit of a pullback. And then in the next 12 to 16 hours, maybe it does challenge resistance again, or maybe just shoots through right now. But as far as price action goes, with that lagging span out, conversion line, baseline, everything is ready to go for Ethereum in my opinion. And I would not be surprised to see Ethereum challenge at least 3,500. As far as pullbacks go, I keep my eye on 3,000, 2920 and below that 2,900 for the time being. And if there is some kind of insane dip for Ethereum, I'd imagine that baseline would come up around here and I keep my eye on around 2690, around 2700. But I don't see that happening for the time being. I wouldn't even worry about that. As far as price targets go, I keep my eye on the breakout target of around 3564, resistance level of around 3187, pullback targets 3000, 2920 and 2900. Looking at YFII's daily chart, you can see it is in nice breakout mode going on here. Conversion line, baseline, nice and far apart. Kumo cloud way over there. It seems to be pumping with Ethereum and Bitcoin. You can see here June 20th, the pump started. Ever since then, it's gone parabolic. So if we jump over to the four hour chart, again, nice uptrend, but prices are trending towards the Kumo cloud, as well as the fact the conversion line is now below the baseline. That is slightly bearish, but it's still not terrible. It may push back above. It needs to get back above this price target of around 44.61. However, price to start to trend towards around 4264 i get a little concerned that it may be losing steam and i'd watch for a pullback to at least around 39.99 around 40 for around 4000 but below that i would also keep my eye on this range here 
price target of around, let me just grab price label, of around 38.04. So my pullback targets for the time being, I keep my eye on 42.64, 39.99, and below that I keep my eye on 38.04. But I wouldn't be surprised if Ethereum keeps pumping that we do see prices get back above 44.61. And from there, it does have a shot to shoot towards 48.28. And on the daily, it does have a bit of a clear push as well. If it can get above 48.28, it's got a shot for 55.48. There's not a lot of resistance up here and above that 63.81 but for the time being i just keep my eye on this i keep my eye on the resistance level of 48.28 possible push to around 54.48 i wouldn't be surprised if it run into a bit of resistance there but for the most part we can see it does move substantially when it does so as far as price targets go keep my eye on the highest of around 55.48 resistance level of around 48.28 pullback. I mean, it's got to get above 44.61 to have a shot at some of these higher price targets, but I keep my eye on pullback targets at 42.64, 39.99, below that 38.04, as well as 34.55. And on the lowest end, I keep my eye on 26.89. Looking at Quant's daily chart, and again, a reminder, we are looking at Quant's Binance daily chart. So we're gonna jump all the way down to the one hour time frame because there is not enough information on the higher time frames. And for those of you who are new here, we've been following Quant every day since it got listed on Binance. So we're gonna turn on our notes from the past few days, and we're gonna talk about where Quant is headed. So for those of you who aren't new here, you know we've talked about Quant a lot. We've been talking about these price targets mostly down here of around 125 to 132 being where I'm assuming Quant will end up. These price targets were way too high for Quant regardless of its low circulation, all the hype around it, and the amazing project that it is. Those really do not concern me. What does concern me, and we've talked about it quite a bit, is that you have to take all of this price action into account and you really have to take all of this into account behind me. The fact that Quant is moved up in a straight parabolic line and in my opinion quant has to come back down i mean this has to correct we've talked about this for a few days so i won't repeat myself but again for those of you who are new here quant's price action when it goes up in a straight line like this you pretty much have to assume there will be some kind of large correction and in my opinion that should be right around there smack in the middle you see 134 and the binance chart kind of backs all that information up as well so let's talk a little bit about what quant has done in the last 24 hours so we zoom in here, we did talk about the fact that while the entire market was pumping, Quant was dumping on the one hour chart. And on the two hour chart, we did see yesterday that it was setting up to dump. And if we look here on the two hour chart, it's not quite started the two hour dump actually. So as far as price action goes, this is in my opinion going lower. In the three hour, we don't really have quite enough information yet, but the two hour is showing that Quant is potentially positioned to dump down in price further. Maybe a bit of sideways action on the two hour chart, but the one hour chart has definitely caught itself. But we did talk about the potential of a bounce, maybe a challenge of 168. We talked about a price target up here that we may see it come down to around 156 because Ethereum and the entire market are pumping. We did talk about the possibility that Quant could take advantage of that, bounce around 156, 158, head up to challenge around 165. It didn't really even do that. It came down, challenged the, the baseline and continued to trend back down in price a little bit higher than where it landed. But I would not be surprised to see Quant trend down in price further to this price target here of around 143. If Quant can manage to push back up to this range here of around 164, 165, then it does have the possibility to push for around 168. And from there, we may see 174 and some of these higher price targets hit. But for the time being, Quant does look like it's on a downtrend, maybe a bit of sideways consolidation before the two hour chart potentially starts to drop down in price. And in that situation, my price target is around 143 where I imagine Quant will spend maybe a few days, maybe even a week consolidating. But in my opinion, Quant is still headed back down to this range where it did have a lot of clear consolidation, a lot of good support of between 125 to 132. What happens after that, we still can't really tell off of the Binance chart. But for the time being, Quant does look like it's trending down. So price targets for Quant, pretty simple. As long as Quant can maintain this support level of around 158, 155, it does have the opportunity to push back for 165 and from there possibly even 168. And if it manages to claim 168, that's a much more bullish scenario for Quant. Quant can push anywhere from 174, 179, even its highs again of around 192. As far as pullback targets go, it looks like Quant is headed to 143 if it can't hang on to the support of around 155. So my pullback target for Quant is mainly 143, where I imagine it might range between 143 to 153 for a little while before working its way down to where it has a lot of support, can consolidate and potentially push to higher prices. 
pullback targets for quant 143 to start and below there i'll be keeping my eye on 132 to 125. Looking at XRP's daily chart, XRP, before we even turn on our notes, you can see here Kumo Cloud has twisted into an uptrend and XRP on this new daily candle is now officially out of the Kumo Cloud and looking very bullish. If we turn on our notes here, XRP does have the potential to push towards 92 cents and possibly even a dollar six. If we jump to the four hour chart, XRP still looking very bullish above every resistance level that it would have ran into. Kumo clouded a bit of a twist here, but it's, since Ethereum and Bitcoin are pumping so hard, it is still indicating an uptrend. And again, everything depends on Ethereum continuing to pump and Bitcoin continuing to pump. It is important to keep an eye on Ethereum with everything going on, with everything else in the market, because the moment Ethereum starts pulling down in price, that will happen across the market. But for the time being, I don't see Ethereum slowing down just yet. So everything does look to, good to go. And as far as price targets for XRP, I would not be surprised to see it trading around 92 cents as long as Ethereum keeps pumping. Price targets for XRP, pretty straightforward. As long as it maintains support of around 80, shows strength above 80 cents, it does have the possibility to push towards 92 cents and even around 106. As far as pullback targets go, if it loses that 80 cent support, I'd keep my eye on a pullback to around 78.4 and possibly even 74.9, right along that moving average. And below there, I would keep my eye on this price target here of around 71 cents. I wouldn't really worry about these lower ones. I mean, it does have support in this range as well, around 68 to around 65 cents but I wouldn't really worry about that for the time being. There would have to be a massive correction across the market. So price targets for XRP, pretty straightforward. It's got to maintain that 80 cent support level above there, 92 resistance and above there, 106 resistance. Pullbacks, if it loses that 80 cent support level, I keep my eye on around 78.4, below that 74.9 and below that 71.9. And at the lowest level for XRP, I would keep my eye on 65 cents. All right, folks, that's all for today. If there's any charts you want to look at in the future, leave it down in the comments below. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and turn that bell on to catch notifications for all daily uploads. If you're not following me on Twitter, Kevin Crates underscore on Twitter. I'm extremely active on there. Anytime you tweet at me, I will always tweet back at you. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. I'm out.